Well here we are in the 6100 tabs Terry Pro rear mount center console. This has got to be one of our most famous hulls. We've got two really big ones, the 5100 and the 6100. We build a lot of boats, but those have got to be our, our big prime models that we build. This one's heading up to the NT shortly, in about half an hour it, it's heading up there. Um, just thought I'd shoot a quick video for you guys so that um, I can show you the general layout of a rear mount and where I think we excel and, and what we do pretty good. So. The first thing I'm going to mention um, is hull length. Um, there's a lot of contentious issue at the moment around how to measure a boat. Um, and you're going to hear all sorts of stories about ISO standards and different things like that. And I really don't care. At the end of the day, what matters is the customer and where he thinks is a fair deal to measure a boat from. And in our opinion, you measure from where the engine bolted onto the back of the boat and you measure to almost to the tip of the boat, not to the tip of the boat because the little bit that pokes out the front called the bowsprit, it really shouldn't be included in the measurement. You can make it longer and that's not fair. So we don't include that at all. It's where the gunnels meet and that's 6100 from there, 6.1 meters from there to there. Some of the things I'd like to point out that you might be hearing is some people are including the rear duck boards in their measurements and they're including bowsprits in their measurements and I did a quick measurement on that before and if I want to measure this boat and, and call that a length it'll be 6.6 .6 meters a little over that. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the front of our boat it comes up on a fairly acute angle. If I laid it out over the water um, I'd sneak another 200 and I could call it a 6850. They're the variances that you can get caught up with when measuring a boat. So 6.1 meters is a, is a measurement of, of what we would consider to be a fair and reasonable waterline length for a reasonably good boat. Um, and our price dictates that. So be very careful when you're buying a boat that you're getting what you pay for. The sticker can't be looked at. You're gonna have to get a tape measure out and you're gonna have to go over it. Look for pods on the back. If the engine sticks out off the back and the bottom isn't level with the back of the boat, you can't include the pod. If you're gonna include the bowsprit, then you're mad but have a look at it and take it off the, off, off the actual measurement and have a look at the shape of the front side on and have a look at where if the side sheet rakes forward and I wouldn't include that either so um, that's how tabs measure it and we reckon ISO standard or not that's the way you should measure a boat in Australia it's just the way we've always done it. Um, I'm going to go quickly with hull shape so um, anyone that's been in a tabs boat know we run a variable dead rise hull in a plate boat very unusual not very many around like that one. Um, that's what we build in this boat. So um, basically we're running a 17 degree midship transom, uh, 17, sorry, 17 degree transom dead rise, a 23 degree midship dead rise, and around a 40 degree entry at the front of the boat. So when you trim the, the boat up and down, you can choose you know, where it slices the way for the day. Um, every day is gonna be different. Sometimes it's gonna be really rough. You're gonna wanna work the nose. Sometimes it's beautiful, you'll get the nose up. You can do that in a variable dead rise boat. If you don't have that and you've got one V all the way through, well, you're just gonna hit the same V. So that's what we run, variable dead rise. We run a curved rocket bottom to help do that. So the bottom of the boat, even though it's strung, is shaped uh, and that allows for more trim range. Um, we're also running a reverse chine. Obviously, if you're gonna run super deep Vs like we do, having a reverse chine um, is going to help with stability as is width and as is weight. So we don't have that problem. We don't have to flood our hulls. Um, we've just got a good hull that doesn't do any of it. So um, think of the hull shape when, you, when you're looking at buying a boat. Um, what I really wanted to get into here was the layout of the boat. So if we have a look at a rear mount, what we've done is obviously shifted the console um, from the front. So the console would normally be positioned here. We've moved it to the rear of the boat for maximum ride and comfort, full trim range. So this boat's gonna come, I'll show you some video of it running in the water later on, um, but you're gonna see about a foot of boat in the water um, that's going to give you dryness, that's going to give you range, fuel economy, top end speeds, yeah, things you can't get if you've got a nose down attitude boat. So when we chop them for a boat, have a look at videos on the water, see where the water's exiting the hull. If it's at the rear, you've got a great boat. If it's pouring off the nose and the engine's trimmed out, it's a wet boat and there's nothing you as a driver can do about that. So consider that when you're purchasing a boat. Um, obviously, if you're going to buy a rear mount, then you're a sports fisherman. So consider the casting platform length. 1.5 meters from here to here which is what we consider to be a reasonable size casting platform it's quite spacious first hatch is in here 
and we include an esky in that, it comes standard with the boat. Forward of that point, which I'll uh, take a picture of for you later, is um, two batteries for your electric motor. Um, we would advise you run at least a 24 volt on here, 80 pound, 72 inch shaft. Um, that's what we run. Massive amount of room at the front. So when you've got a rear mount, one of the biggest, adva biggest advantages is obviously your room at the back is limited because we've moved the console to the back. But now you've got to use this. So if you want to throw a swag down, you want to put more eskies in here, you want to do that sort of sport style camping uh, range fishing, this is the boat to do it in. So massive amount of room up here that you can do whatever you want with. With fishing in the rear of the boat, we generally run seats across the back, which are removable. A bit tight when they're new. Once you move the seat, all of a sudden you've got a massive amount of fishing room again. So there's no reason with this width boat, we just about need to pack lunch to walk across it, but it's massive. There's, there's no shortage of space here. You could easily fish three boats across the back. You're not going to be shoulder to shoulder. Plenty of strike room. Um, everything's well thought out at the back. So um, I won't remove this out of the way. Because it's going to Darwin, it's all got locked down, mate. Right? So we've locked it all down so it can travel up there nicely and he can um, move around without wearing any paint off. Um, but the back of the boat, the walk through, the step through, bait table, it's all been thought about. Um, I'll do some pictures of it and I'll do a video of that later and I'll go through that with you. Um, some more on, the, on direct items in here. What we've got here is our rear mount console. Um, we're pretty proud of it for several reasons. One is its versatility. We have moved it around the boat. Some customers would prefer to have it forwards or backwards. Um, in this instance, it's a rear mount. And what I particularly like about the rear mount is its height. Um, against the double stand up one, obviously that would be up here, there's a lot less resistance from the wind. So towing wise, you don't even know this is behind your boat. You wouldn't think a screen like that would make a difference, but it really does. Um, some, some cars will really struggle trying to get over 110 or up to 110k an hour with a screen like that. So the other benefits obviously is when you're sitting down, uh, you're looking through the screen, you can look over it, you can flick lures around it. It's just not in your way. Uh, our particular version um, will carry enough room that you can run a 12 inch sounder and also many, many other gauges that you want on it. This, this um, customer's opted for the digital Suzuki gauge, one of my favorite gauges. Um, you could go two gauges on there if you wanted to, um, but we're pretty happy with that. 12-inch um, sounder. Um, in this instance, we've gone for the uh, Lowrance Elite TI2. Um, pretty good sounder. Fits on there nicely. Um, if you come around the side, this console and one of the things that we're always proud of is making sure that our boats are foolproof. Um, if you hit a sandbar or something happens, you attach T-tops to it, you want to give it the greatest chance of survival. And in our opinion, most consoles aren't bolted in properly. Just putting a piece of channel down the bottom and bolting it through the floor isn't going to cut it. What we do is we put a bracket on here. That bracket that's there is also on the front and on, on the other side. It's bolted in with a particular um, pattern of bolts um, that we found that pattern resists any movement. It also goes under the floor and it's welded to brackets. The bell plate on the front goes the same distance down as it does up and it securely locates this. This can't move. It's extremely solid in there. Um, another feature that we run just above it obviously is this recess. This is new for the 2020 range, but um, we run an EPIRBs and flares in there. Um, no doubt you'll see some other brands will start coming into uh, having a look at that and they might start using it, but remember you saw it here first. So fire it and fire extinguisher nipo recess standard on the boat uh, moving to the front obviously plenty of room here for switch panels uh, VHS massive big storage area right here and a really cool lip on the top here you can see the lip on there we can throw keys watts phones uh, lures also just a general tray for all sorts of stuff that you can put your gear in but um, all in all one really good solid console what we've got here is our bait table. Uh, we're pretty proud of this bait, bait, bait table. Obviously there's many different types and varieties out there. What we like about ours is this massive big storage area that you see on here. 
and obviously the, the bait table on top. So it is fully removable. You can slide that out. Not many do that. You can hose all that off, hose it all off, um, and put it back together. So that sits on there like that. At the back of it, you've got your drain. So it's all, all a slop. Um, goes out of pipe down the bottom, out of the boat. Nothing's in the boat. You've got little storage area supplies. Obviously three rod holders. You can troll off here. It's bolted very, very securely through. A lot of guys will actually climb in the boat, will grab hold of that on the way in uh, and, and use it to, to um, you know, stabilize themselves. So that works pretty cool. If we work our way, way, way down, you've got your isolation switches down here. This guy's opted for a um, voltage system relay as well on here. And that just basically charges his batteries, but it's all out of the way. When you walk through, you're not gonna knock your leg on it. Um, it's out of the sun. Um, it, it works pretty good. As we work our way around the corner, got our battery enclosure. This is now standard on all 2020 models. What we like about this is it's a little bit unique to most that you'll see. Some go right across, some go three quarters from here to here. By going just in the middle of the boat, you've got plenty of room for a couple of batteries. But you've also got plenty of standing room. So you can get your feet right under here. Here, obviously, with the bait table, you're not going to fish here. But when you do get into the corner, you get right into here. Plenty of room. Um, you can also put tote tanks under there. You can use that area for a lot of different things. Um, we like it. If I move to this area, you've got your live bait tank. Um, it's massive, so um, it's a huge, huge, big tank. So plenty of liveys can fit in there. Rounded corners. It's a proper bait tank. Very usable. One of the things that I think you'll find most unique about our boats is the amount of internal space, and the way we've able to achieve that is it's actually 850 millimetres from here to where the engine sits on on the back. That's the amount of lost space across here, which means more room in the boat. If you start paying attention, attention to different boats, you're gonna see that this is an area where you can save a lot of construction. You can come off the top and just do simple folds, but the engine's got nowhere to trim, so they have to move it forward into the usable space area. So if you run a tape from the back of the boat to the front, and, and run a tape over, you'll see there's a lot more space in this boat than you would normally get in. And a rear mount, that's critical. So have a good look at that as well. Uh, Walkthroughs, uh, we put it 2020 models. We've now got a plate across here to hide all your wiring. Nice to step in and out of. And you'll notice on the boarding platform on the back is larger than last year's model. We've now got 700 mil of boarding platform and you'll see that on both sides. Well, that concludes the layout of our 6100 Terry Pro. Um, I hope that you can see some unique features that we do things a little bit different. Um, please feel free to give us a call at the factory or give one of our dealers a call anytime.